let me introduce you to a somewhat strange thing, positive shape and negative space. Positive shape and negative space play an important role in determining the overall composition in a work of art. By understanding positive shape and negative space and applying your knowledge, you can become more successful in designing your compositions and perhaps inserting some strange things into an image that curbs your viewer's interest. So what exactly is positive shape and negative space? Simply put, positive shape can be described as the areas in a work of art that are the subjects or the main areas of interest. Negative space is the area around the subject, which can be considered something like the setting for a positive shape. So take a look at the image you see here. For example, do you see faces or a vase? If you're seeing a vase, then you are seeing the white area as the positive shape. The black areas become the negative space. If you're seeing faces, then you see the black areas as positive shape and the white area as the negative space. Hello everyone, and with this next drawing, I'm working out here in my little studio and I've set up a kind of drawing board and a space for me to produce a new work. For this drawing, I would like you to, you know, set up an interesting subject matter. And so what I've got here is um, a nice still life with these weeds. I'm kind of interested in weeds lately. Um, so don't tell me that you don't have an interesting subject. Um, I don't think your neighbors would mind you pulling their weeds uh, that you can set up and draw. Um, they provide some really interesting sort of intricate line work and um, kind of um, movement through the piece. So with this drawing, we're going to be focusing on composition and space. So let's get started. Here is my drawing paper and my still life subject matter um, with some interesting things going on. The other thing that I need is my viewfinder. Um, remember we made the, one of those uh, a while back, but if you've lost it or want to make a different one, this one I decided to make a little bit smaller since I'm kind of seated pretty close to my subject matter. Um, you know, take a look through your viewfinder. Try to find a way to um, kind of break up the space with your subject and you know, try to make it dynamic. Think about placement from one side to the other. And then once you've got, you know, an idea of what you wanna draw, start to sketch it out lightly on your paper with a gesture you're only like we've been working with. And then after that, start to cite proportion and scale using the citing methods that I've been showing you, using your drawing tool to measure things. So I'm doing a little bit of siding proportion and scale, kind of comparing the height with the width of my subject, put my arm out straight, use my pencil, compare height and width, and make sure I've kind of got that nicely in space. And then the focus of this drawing is composition. So we're going to start with a, a light gesture drawing and get it mapped out on our page. And then from there, we're going to do something kind of wild and crazy, haha, -ha, and not actually draw our subject matter. We're going to draw everything that is around it, the negative space. So use your skills of creating a nice outer contour line of your subject. And that is just, you know, the item that you're drawing, not what it's sitting on top of, but I've got my bouquet of weeds and the flowers in front of it. That's my positive shape. So define the positive shape first. You know, break those edges, get a nice contour line and then we'll move on from there. So my still life is pretty complex, so I'm gonna do my best to get those outer edges and the suggestion of these weeds that I'm drawing here. And just focus on that nice detailed outer form of 
that subject. So I've got some really interesting things sticking out. And when you're doing the contour line, remember, slow down, take it easy, and enjoy the process and meditate on it a bit. Can be a really relaxing thing to do. The focus of this drawing is on the perception of negative spaces. So you will use your new skills of seeing and drawing complicated edges in order to draw the edges of negative spaces. So this exercise will be a little bit of a stretch for some, a joy for others. Um, there is an antic or a sort of whimsical quality to seeing negative spaces. Uh, so in a sense, you are seeing what is not there. In your regular life, it's often a new experience to realize that spaces are important. We tend to focus on objects. We are really an objective culture. So my aim is to make spaces become real for you and to provide a new experience in seeing. The word negative in negative spaces is a bit unfortunate because it carries, well, you know, a negative connotation. The terms negative space and positive form have the advantage of being easy to remember and they are, after all, commonly used in the whole field of art and design. So the main point is that negative spaces are just as important as the positive forms. For the person learning to draw, they are perhaps more important. Now that you have your contour outline of the shape of your composition, I want you to put your pencil down and pick up your charcoal, your eraser, your white Conte. Uh, blending stumps work really well. And now what we're going to do is ignore our subject, ignore the positive shape, and draw only what we see in the negative space to help us really start to think more very more carefully about composition and the importance of seeing the positive shape as equal to the negative space. So charcoal is nice because you can push it around easily and do your best to stay outside those contour lines but we will also have the opportunity to clean those up a bit later. So every bit of that outer area should have some kind of value added to it. So we haven't worked as much with value. So just do your best since this is our kind of our first time to, you know, push the charcoal around a little bit more. Try out the blending stump, see how that works for you. And take a look at really what is beyond your subject matter. You know, draw in those um, shadows a bit and other elements that you see. You know, there are also objects out there. You know, you have the edge of a table, for instance. I have, you know, these gloves that are there on the table that I want to include and then I have a bookshelf beyond there and those elements are all just as important as that still life of the weeds that I was working on. my fingers quite a bit when I use charcoal. Um, you can also use, you know, a, a rag of some sort to help you push it around. Why does using negative space make drawing easier? I believe it's because you don't know anything in a verbal sense about these spaces, because you have no pre-existing memorized symbols for space shapes, so you can draw them clearly and correctly. Um, so, in drawing, the term composition means the way the components of a drawing are arranged by the artist. Some key components of a composition are positive shapes, which would be, you know, whatever you're drawing, the objects or persons, 
or and negative spaces, which would be the empty areas, and the format, which would be the re relative length and width of the bounding edges of the surface, the basically the shape of the drawing paper. So to compose a drawing, therefore, the artist places and fits together the positive shapes and negative spaces within the format with the goal of unifying the composition. You can see as I'm drawing that, you know, my interior shape that I did is getting a little bit dirty, but that's okay. Sometimes you actually have to draw through it a bit to make sure that you're, you know, connecting, you know, that area where that, you know, still life is sitting or your subject matter. And then also to get those elements in the background correct. So do your best and then, you know, don't forget all of it. So not just the table the thing is sitting on, but also everything that is beyond it. That's the negative space. Use your charcoal as well as you can. This is part of what's getting used to, you know, your drawing tools by using them, you know, making mistakes. That's okay. Um, this, comp this drawing is not about absolute perfection. It's about creating an interesting dynamic compositional space and how to really force yourself to start focusing on that much more than maybe you have in the past. So it's important to see in the spaces beyond your subject matter, just to look at the spaces between things, because those are really what can set a, you know, a, a scene up. You know, I know a lot of you might be, you know, in different fields or, you know, there's other areas of art where, you know, composition is always, you know, an important thing, no matter what art field that you're in, or even if you're just working on appreciating art more. When you go to a museum and you take a look at what an artist has done, you can really see how they've worked very hard to set up that space so that you view it in a really interesting and dynamic way. Use your white to help you blend a bit and get some lighter gray tones in there. So when you do this, make sure that you're setting up your still life somehow in the center of the room, not just from a blank wall, because obviously you know, that's going to be a very static composition. And what I'm looking for is for you to really get a handle on, you know, setting up something that is unique and interesting. Look beyond your subject. It's so important. Um, there's so much there to pay attention to, and it's interesting and fascinating and adds so much more to your work. So I'm starting with getting the larger sort of overall shapes of what you see in that, uh, you know, bookshelf beyond my still life. And then from there, I'll work on some of those bits of detail, like, you know, a light switch hanging out in my composition is kind of interesting and surprising, you know? You want to do something that no one else has done before. You want to show, you know, other people something that, you know, they're not used to seeing, you know? They're like, oh, wow, I didn't notice that before. And you, you're the artist making them take notice of things they wouldn't normally take notice of. Try out the blending stump. See how it can help you, you know, push your charcoal around as well. Work all the way up to the edges of that shape, that contour shape that you drew of your still life. And get value something in everything, everywhere in that space. Do not leave any empty spaces except that area of your still life. 
And what we will do is we still see those edges. We'll bring those back a little bit later. Don't worry about that. But I tried my best to kind of get a bit of an overview to start, get something in every part of the page so that I can start to then focus on some of the more interesting, smaller details that I can, you know, tweak and make look a little bit more interesting and beautiful in the drawing. I have to say, this isn't an easy, this isn't necessarily an easy, you know, drawing that we're doing, but it really is helping you improve your drawing skills even more. So with each exercise that we do, if you stick with it and stick with me on this, you're going to find that your drawing skills improve, your perception changes, and you're really seeing things, you know, in a new way that will hopefully be inspiring to you in your regular life, no matter whether you're an artist or not. Also use your eraser as a drawing tool if that helps. If the charcoal gets to be a little bit too much, just draw with your eraser. Try to pull out some lights and darks as best as you can. And as we continue developing draw our drawing skills, we're gonna you know work our way into more value. This is just a little bit of an intro to it um, to get you used to using some materials and then as we continue you'll get more direction of value the best way to learn is really by doing so just watching a demo isn't the same as actually working along with me on it so in the classroom i'm always you know, forcing students to dive in and get going and work with me on a drawing. And there's also joy in mistakes that you make as well, or what you might see as a mistake. Often what students think is maybe not the best is, is something that I would think is a discovery, you know, a process. So learning by doing is super important. And so throughout this course, you're gonna find that you're gonna make a lot of drawings. Um, you know, the more you do it, the better you get, it becomes easier, you get faster at it, and then pretty soon you can draw anything that you want at any time. So at this point, you might think, oh gosh, my drawing's like a total mess. What is Melissa having us do? Um, but really, you know, you, you can sort this out. You know, this is part of what an artist does, you know, all the time. Sorting out the complexity of their image. And there's always a point, you know, in the drawing where, you know, maybe you want to like scrap it and throw it away. Uh, but don't do it, you know. Keep working with it. And go with me here because that is going to help you become that much better. Don't give up. Um, get a little bit more refinement on it. So exercises that I take you through may not be always 
you know, the simplest thing, the easiest thing to you. But if you work at it, over time, you'll see yourself improve and respond to what you see in a really interesting way. Like even when I'm watching a movie, you know, you'll see me like notice things in the background that other people don't notice. I guess a good example is like Stranger Things, like all of you know that show, I'm sure. And like there's so much in the environment of that uh, series that comes from kind of childhood memories. So I, I like I notice I'm like, oh, I used to have that set of glasses when I was young kind of thing. And it's totally aside from, you know, what the actual narrative is, but it, it draws me in, right? And that's what artists do, you know, filmmaking or visual art, painting, animation, anything that you do uh, sets up a kind of tone, a kind of narrative that you present to the viewer. And so here, yeah, I don't know, it's kind of an interesting gardening glove here, you know, that looks a little bit dark and like mysterious. Maybe it's like what happened here, like in this room with the light switch. Ha ha. Okay, so at some point you want to decide that you know it's a good amount of detail in that background area. Put your messy charcoal down, look at my hands, lovely. And um, you know, wipe them off a little bit and you know, grab your eraser and also gather um, your gesso or your white acrylic paint, a paintbrush and a little bit of water. And we'll be right back. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is return to my pencil and my eraser and go back and just re-clarify those edges of the positive shape of my still life. So try to figure out where those were, look for that you know contour line that you had drawn originally, bring it back a little bit. You know, not too much. Um, but just that you can see that edge a bit more than before. And if there's something that you missed, it's another chance to sort of reassess the outer edge of what you drew. So the format controls composition. So put another way, the shape of the drawing surface, usually a rectangular paper, will greatly influence how an artist distributes the spaces and shapes within the bounding edges of that surface. So experienced artists fully comprehend the importance of the shape of the format. So beginning students in drawing, however, are curiously oblivious to the shape of the paper and the boundaries of the paper. So because their attention is directed almost exclusively towards the objects or persons that they're drawing, they seem to regard the edges of the paper as almost non-existent, almost like the real space that surrounds objects and has no bounds. This ob obliviousness to the edges of the paper, which bound both the negative spaces and positive shapes, causes problems with composition for nearly all beginning art students. The most serious problem is the failure to unify the spaces and the shapes, a basic requirement for good composition. Negative spaces require really the same degree of attention and care that the positive forms require. Once you've got those edges pretty well defined, um, you want to take some white acrylic paint or some white gesso, whichever one you have, and get that out with a bit of water. And you'll notice that basically with every drawing that I do, I tape down all four edges because I always use, I almost always use like some sort of mixed media when I do drawing. So, um, that helps to um, keep the drawing flat when you use wet media. So what I'm gonna do now is take that white paint, 
gesso or acrylic, acrylic white and paint in that shape of the positive shape of the still life that you would normally expect to have a bunch of detail and just make it a white silhouette. And this is gonna help you, you know, clean up any other excess marks and also, you know, define those ed edges a little bit further. And really make that background pop in an unusual way. And so once you get this done, you can also, you know, take another look at the background to make sure that you're happy with how the space is looking. You know, if you need to do a few more details after, that's okay too. So as I complete the drawing, the um, white paint or gesso that I bring into that shape really just helps make a nice crisp, defined, positive shape versus that negative space and helps you to really notice how important those spaces between things are and how important it is to not forget that background. So as I finish, um, you can see that with the tape it will flatten out again and as it dries I pull the tape off and it's really great because then I have a really nice cleanly framed drawing that is very well presented and looks fantastic to show the viewer. It's been great working with you all today and I hope that you can join me again next time.